But hey, now everyone and their mothers are talking about NFTs. It's the new hype train right now. I mean, there's so much information going around right now about NFTs. People saying it's just a Ponzi scheme, just a way for the rich to get richer, just scamming people, just a way for the rich people to hide money and not have to pay taxes. And then you've also got people out there saying that this is actually the next big investment strategy. This is the future of investing. It's the future of crypto. I think people are grossly underestimating NFTs. I believe in the next 15 years that that nobody writes a book with a publisher, they do it through an NFT infrastructure. I believe that in 15 years, nobody launches a record label. By having a record label give them the bag, they're gonna get it from crowdfunding by selling NFTs and giving a percentage of royalties. I and, believe and that there's not a single sporting event or concert in 10 years that the ticket is not an NFT. But we're not here to talk about the logistical side of NFTs. That's for a different video on the, uh, this Ponzi scheme side of it, the tax fraud part. That's all way too dense for this video alone. In this video, we're just here to see, can you actually make money doing this, right? Because I see YouTube videos, TikToks, news articles of people making tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars off of NFTs and just putting in a few hundred bucks or a few thousand dollars and coming out absolutely huge. So I just wanna know how can I get in on this hype train and make some money while we are in such a bull run. So let's quickly go over what even are NFTs, what do they do, what's their purpose and all that good stuff. And then we'll dive into me trying to find the next big upcoming NFT projects and see if I can actually make any money flipping them. So NFT, NFT stands for non-fungible token. Now, what does that actually mean, right? Because people kind of just throw around this term all the time and I don't think a lot of people actually understand what non-fungible token actually means. So let's break it down. So let's start with what does even a fungible asset mean? So a fungible asset is something like this. For example, if you have a $50 bill and you hand me that $50 bill, I can then hand you back five $10 bills. Now what this means, right, is you just gave me $50, I gave you $50 of the exact same thing, it was both cash, the same medium, neither one of us is at a loss here. We both exchanged the exact same asset, we both still have $50, we just swapped, right? It's the exact same medium. Fungible asset is just something that you can identically exchange, that's all that is. Now a non-fungible asset is something like real estate, for example, right? Let's say we both have a house. Let's say our houses were both built in the same exact year in the same neighborhood by the same exact guy, right? But let's say at one point I decided to paint my kitchen white, you painted yours gray, I decided to put granite countertops in, maybe you went with butcher block or laminate countertops or something different. Maybe I did some different tile in my bathroom than you did. The point I'm making is now we can no longer exchange, right? This is non-fungible because if you give me your house and I give you my house, our houses are now worth different values, right? Because even though they are built by the same exact person in the same exact year, we now have different unique properties. I have a white kitchen, you have a gray kitchen. I have granite countertops, you have butcher block countertops. I have brown tile in my bathroom, you have pink tile in your bathroom, right? You get the point. It's non-fungible, meaning if we traded one of us is not going to get the same thing. It's not identical. We can't just swap back and forth and have the exact same value. Art pieces are also another great example of non-fungible. I mean, take the Mona Lisa for example. You can't just swap the Mona Lisa out for another painting and have it be the exact same, right? It's a unique thing. There's only one Mona Lisa and that's it. You can't make an identical one ever. It won't be the same value. Then lastly, the token part. Token just stands for it being the digital asset that exists on the blockchain. That's all the token means. So an NFT is just a digital asset that exists on the blockchain that cannot be swapped for any other asset on the blockchain because they are all unique and different in their own ways. Now that we understand kind of what this is roughly, let's talk about why do people even buy this stuff? And it doesn't even make sense, right? Because here, look, I can just go on my phone right now and I can just search up a crypto punk. By the way, look up crypto punks right now. They go for hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's ridiculous. So this crypto punk right here, it's a few hundred grand. And then, you know, I can just screenshot that a few times and now it's mine. I own this now. That is my crypto punk. It was that easy. Like seriously, it does not make any sense that I can just go right and screenshot this thing that's a hundred thousand dollars. But not exactly how that works, is it? Because everyone has a unique wallet address, right? So I can see exactly who owns that. I know exactly who owns that. I know how many times that thing has been sold and I know whose wallet it's currently in. So you can't really fake owning an NFT. You either own it or you don't. If you try and fake it and try and spoof it, uh, you'll get called out pretty fast if you try and act like you have like a crypto punk. It's not that hard to figure out who actually owns that crypto punk. So when it comes to NFTs, there's really a slew of reasons why people buy in. And there's a few actual legit reasons that I think give NFTs a good running ground and a good potential for the future, but we're not gonna go into those necessarily. 
But the main reasons I think people are buying them right now is to either try and make a buttload of money because of all the hype or for status or for a collection. So for collection reasons, let's talk about that first, right? People would think that's a ridiculous. Why are people collecting JPEGs? Well, let me ask you this. Why do people collect Pokemon cards, right? Why do people collect Marvel comics? Why do people collect Winnie the Pooh Bear stuffed animals, right? There's a thousands, there's millions of things that people collect that are worth tens of thousands of dollars now just because a large group of people have gotten behind it and decided to make it for some reason valuable, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's really just game theory. If you have enough people behind a certain collection or NFT group, it's obviously gonna become worth a whole lot more values. So that's that part of the collections. Now for status part, why do people go out here and buy $600,000 NFTs, million dollar NFTs, right? Because it's happened before. People buy million dollar NFTs. So why do people buy a million dollar image? I don't know, maybe because they can. Why do people buy Rolexes or Ferraris and then they buy the Ferrari and flex it on Instagram, right? Or they buy their private jet and flex that on Instagram as well. I mean, there's tons of reasons why people buy ridiculous, ridiculous things that have absolutely no value or use besides the fact that just to say, I have this and you don't, I'm rich and you're not as rich as me. And that's really the status part of it. Now, like I said, there are some that have some utility use that I think will really help shape the future of NFTs and be the actual future of them, but we're not going to go into those in this video. That's another video, so look out for that one. Now, NFTs are still fairly new. I mean, they're not that new. They've been around for probably five or four years or so now, I think. They're not that new, but still fairly new in the way of hype right now that everyone is jumping into it. Now, I do stand by my opinion that I think 90% of these current NFT projects are probably going to go to zero, and they're not going to be worth anything in less than three years. The people are just going to forget about those. The last 10%, I think 8% of those have a fighting chance of being kind of in that top 2% and being around for at least four or so years. And then the top 2% like CryptoPunks, Board 8, Yacht Club, etc. Those ones I think will be here to stay for a while because those are the ones that really help pave the road and lay the groundwork for NFTs and the future of it right now. So I think the top 2% of those NFT collections are going to be around for a really, really long time as those were the OGs. Okay, so enough about the logistics and behind NFTs. Let's go ahead and jump into now me trying to make money flipping some of these NFTs. So before we get into it, the strategy I'm going to be using is minting. I think minting is, in my opinion, the safest way to go about this because that's when you can usually get in at the lowest price. Not always guaranteed. It could always drop lower after mint or it could moon, you know, and rock it and go crazy after mint and then you lose out. So I personally think getting in at minting is the safest bet because that's when it's usually the cheapest. You can get in anywhere from like $100 to like $600. You can get in when it's usually fairly cheap with the chance that it might actually go up in value soon after that. So the best way I have found to look for upcoming NFTs is using something called rarity.tools. All right, so before we get started and dive into rarity.tools, it's important to note I am by no means a crypto expert or NFT expert. By no means or way will I ever claim I am an NFT expert or a crypto expert. I am just a normal person trying to show you guys if this stuff actually works. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into it. So this is rarity.tools and this is obviously, it says right here, upcoming NFT sales. Now personally, like I was talking about, I think that minting an NFT is probably your best shot of making money. Um, that's just me though. I think that is the safest way for me because when you mint it, you know, you know, if you put $500 in, you have a pretty good shot that it's going to go up. But if it doesn't go up, you're just, you're already prepared for that. You know, whereas if you buy an aftermarket where it's already like three or four grand or, you know, 1500 bucks, uh, that's a lot more money to lose depending on the person. But for me, losing $1,500 is still pretty substantial and pretty heartbreaking. So that's why getting in at minting time when it's only 0.09 Ethereum instead of, you know, 2 Ethereum or 3 or even, you know, 0.15, whatever it is, right? So I think getting in at mint time when the prices are so low just really mitigates your risk. So with that said as well, on the site, as you can see, you have, uh, it shows you some featured projects. This is projects that, you know, are on their featured list, obviously. Um, and we're not going to go too deep into all of them because I think I'm just going to go ahead and buy one of these Bitcoin billionaire ones and maybe a house of Satan ones and just see what happens. Um, I've done my due diligence already, but I'm not going to bore you guys in this video because that's not really what this video is all about. If you guys want me to do another video, a lot more in depth about NFTs and how it all works and what kind of projects you should really be looking out for and how to really go deep and analyze it. Let me know down in the comments below. I can definitely make another much more in depth video series about NFTs. So 
let's just look at these two right here, right? Well, we'll look at one more just to compare. So first we'll start down here at the Crazy Panther Party right here. And uh, we'll click on their Twitter right here because one thing I'm really looking for is do these have followings? Is there a lot of people behind them? Right, because you're looking for things that have a big movement behind them because when these things go public, right, and people start minting them, you want other people to be buying these up like crazy because they think they are going to go crazy, right? You really want to buy into those collections that have that kind of cult following behind them. Just like the Board A Club or the CryptoPunks, they have those massive, massive followings behind them that allow them to drive those prices so high up and make way more money off of those CryptoPunk NFTs or whatever it is. So right here, they have 7,000 followers. That's pretty good. But now when we go back and we evaluate like the Bitcoin Billionaire Club here. Oops, that's their website. Click on their Twitter here. What I'm looking for again is followers. 15,000 followers. Basically, we'll just round it up here. 15,000 followers. That is really, really good. Now, the next thing I want to check is I want to see their Discord group. Now, I already have it pulled up right here. So I want to see inside. Is it active? So it's 234 right now. And in the last like five minutes, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of messages. So that tells me that this is a very active group. There's a lot of people who I think are trying to get in on this. There's a lot of people asking about the mint price. How much can they mint it? Can they get it? Is it ready yet? Is it open yet? There's a lot of people asking how they can get in right now. So as you can see here, <laughs> the minting for the Bitcoin billionaire starts in 25 minutes. I think I'm going to go with this one. I think... It's got enough people behind it and it's got enough followers. It's got a really large Discord group. I think there's like 40,000 people in this group or something. A lot of people behind it. I think it has a chance of going up in value. So now really quick, we'll take a look at their website and kind of what's going on here. So here's their website and it looks like they have six different kind of NFTs you can mint. You have humans, zombies, ethereals, aliens, goldens, and legendaries. Obviously, as you go up this list, the more rare they are and the more money they'll be worth. Legendaries being worth the most, humans being worth the least. Okay, so now we see which characters you can actually unlock. Let's go ahead and we'll check out their actual page right here. This is the Bitcoin Billionaire page. And as you can see here, we can take a look. Let me just refresh just to make sure it's all accurate for you guys. The floor price is at 0.114. Now you can mint one of these for 0 0.09. So that means you're already up, you know, a little bit of money right off of the mint. Um, so now we look here. I always like to click. You can you can see their items here, and if you're seeing all these kind of mass covers, that's the thing that a lot of these projects are doing now. Um, they kind of build more hype around it, right? So these are all masked off because they're not going to reveal which character you actually have until October 30th, and today is the 28th. So you'll be able to know by the 30th if you got a legendary or a normal one or whatever it is, right? So that kind of adds a little bit of a level of excitement to it, making it a little more gamified, I guess you could say. A little more exciting for people to kind of just to get in on and just, you know, have some fun with. But I like to click on activity here. I have to see, are these actually selling even like this? And it looks like they are. They're selling literally just as a blank thing that people don't even know. People are spending 524, 525, 550, 588, $600. Just try, I mean, look at this. One of these down here sold for an hour ago, sold for $760. Why? I honestly don't know. I have no idea why. Who knows why some of these are selling for so much, but it looks like there is some solid activity behind that. So I think I am going to try and mint one of these in about 22 minutes. Now, let's look at another one upcoming really quick too on the feature list. This is House of Satan. Um, we'll go here and we'll look at their Twitter. Okay, so their Twitter, they are at 45,000 followers. A lot, a lot more followers. Now, here's the thing. Be careful because, you know, chances are anyone can go launch one of these and make a fake Twitter, or not a fake Twitter, but make a real Twitter and buy a ton of Twitter followers. It's not that hard. I could literally do that. Super, super easy. Their minting begins on the 30th. Let's see, if we join their Discord here, They've only got 16,000 members in this in their Discord, which is not bad, really. But if we accept this invite, let's just see if anyone is really active in here. Definitely a lot, a lot less active. I mean, I'm just looking at this here. Yeah, people aren't talking in this nearly as much as 
uh, this one, the billionaire Bitcoin or the Bitcoin billionaire ones, that may just be because today is minting day. So the reason why I am going to try and mint one of these Bitcoin billionaire ones is just because of the fact that there's just a lot more activity going on in this Discord compared to the other ones I've checked out today. But we're not gonna go over all of them today because there's just not enough time in this video to do that. We're just really gonna take a small sample size of NFTs that I've already you know, done my due diligence on beforehand. And we're just gonna go with the one I think is the best bet, which I honestly think is this Bitcoin billionaire one. It costs 0.09 Ethereum to mint. I've got a little bit of Ethereum in my uh, MetaMask wallet here. I've got 0.12. I have a little bit more because of gas fees. Uh, gas fees this time of day when there's a lot of minting projects going on. It's about 2.40 in the afternoon for me right now. A lot of minting projects going on. Gas fees are going to be really, really high. Probably like $100 to $200. So if you don't mind smashing that like button for me and hit the subscribe button because this video is going to cost me a small fortune. You know, I'm not a huge YouTuber yet. You know, 530 bucks, that's still a lot of money to be just throwing down for a YouTube video right now for me. But for the sake of the channel and for the sake of you guys, we can actually figure out is this all hype or can you actually make money doing this? I'm putting the money on the line for all of you guys right now. So let's go back here to the minting page. We're gonna go ahead and come back in about 19 minutes and uh, let's see, um, you know, what happens. We're gonna hopefully try and get one if the gas fees aren't too high because I really don't wanna add more money to this wallet. If I have to, I will for the video. Um, I might just actually transfer another $200 in there just for the sake of this video, just to make sure I have enough in there. And then we will uh, come back to this page and we'll just wait for the minting to happen. And so I'll see you guys in about 18 minutes. Or I guess for you guys, just this next scene. Okay, let's go. Okay, so it looks like it finally went through. We were waiting for gas fees to go down because I was not spending $180 on gas fees for this. But it looks like all in, we ended up spending about $468, $382 for the NFT and $85 in gas. Guys, what did I just do? I basically just set $500 on fire for no reason. I am never gonna financially recover from this. So pray for your boy because uh, let's hope I end up with a rare one or a good one or something because that uh, that's unfortunate. That was a lot of money just to kind of just drain just like that. Uh, the actual NFT has not appeared up in my asset list here. As soon as it does, I'll get back on here. We'll go over that. But uh, yeah, we'll have our reveal to see what we actually minted in two days now. So on October 30th, I'll we'll come back here and we will see what's happened. Unless I've listed it on OpenSea and I sold it and made a little bit of money back just to be safe. Because worst case scenario is I get the reveal and I have one of the crappiest characters and then um, it's only worth like $200 and I lose a bunch of money. So we'll see what happens guys. I'll catch you guys in probably two or so days or if this sells. But for now, just like this video for me guys, please. That was a lot of money just to light on fire for this. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. All right, so it's been about a week since I minted my Bitcoin billionaire and let's just say I'm pretty sure I'm ready to cash in and buy my Lambo now. So taking my NFT here, it says redheaded person right here with some purple sunglasses or pink sunglasses, whatever, with a Viking helmet on the desk and a nice little blue desk with this kind of little backdrop here. Uh, but okay, truthfully, I actually, um, well, I have not made it out big yet. So as of right now, the floor price for Bitcoin billionaires is sitting around 0.1 Ethereum. So as of now, I am up a few dollars. It's been a bumpy ride since minting. As you can see here, we've been up and down since the project has came online, but things have steadily been moving back up. So I am up, you know, a couple of bucks, but nothing too crazy yet. So should I sell now while I'm up a few dollars here, you know, make out with a little bit on top, or do I just hold it and wait for the potential of a moonshot here? I mean, come on, what's the worst that could happen? I lose 500 bucks or, or hear me out, I make like 1500 bucks because this thing moonshots. The game plan is you go in there, hit them with some good shit, don't get hit, and uh, come home with a pocket full of cash. I don't know. Let me know down below in the comments. What would you do? Would you sell? Would you hold? 
I mean, currently right now, the Bitcoin billionaire project I am invested in is ranked in the top 35 crypto projects on OpenSea. So maybe that's a good sign that I should maybe hold on for just a little bit. Also, you can always go actually check out their Bitcoin billionaire page. I'll leave links down below in the description. You can go check out the Bitcoin billionaire page and see the floor price and see if I am down bad or not. I'll also list my Bitcoin billionaire in the description so you can see if I've ever sold. So you will know if I sell, if it does not have my name by who it's owned by and you can see in the activity log exactly how much I ended up selling for. So let's talk about my final analysis on NFTs if I actually think you can make money doing this. So I also think yeah I think you can make really good money and a whole lot of life changing money very very quickly doing this. I mean we've all seen that happen before. Now that's not going to happen to everyone obviously but you know making a thousand dollars two thousand dollars off of like 200 600 bucks that's still really good for a lot of people. That's a lot of money still for a good amount of people. But, I mean, let's not lie to ourselves. This is basically a higher form of gambling when you think about it. I mean, when it comes down to it, I think it's really more just luck, right? It's just gambling. Because if I buy into enough of these projects with big enough momentum behind them, uh, odds are I'm probably going to get lucky at least one, two, or three of those times, right? Buying in enough of these, that will probably cover off my other losses and allow me to skim a little bit extra off the top and make some good money. You might get really lucky and, you know, get something really, really rare that you can sell for tens of thousands of dollars depending on the project that you're minting or that you've bought into. It all just comes down to how lucky are you feeling right now and how much money do you have to potentially lose? And only ever please put in money you are comfortably losing. You know, don't go mortgaging the farm trying to get rich off of this. This is not the way you do that. So at the end of the day, I think for sure you can definitely make money doing this, but like I said, it's just a higher form of gambling and it just comes down to luck. If you were able to pick the right project and it has enough momentum behind it, you'll probably be all right, at least break even and get your money back out. Or you might be one of the lucky SOBs who make tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars if you are one of those people, let me know down below in the comments if you are making some killer money right now minting and flipping NFTs. I want to know and I want to talk to you if you actually are. So remember guys, none of this is financial advice, entertainment purposes only. Be safe out there. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. It's been a really fun one to make. And let me know down below in the comments, do I sell, pull my money out, and move on to another project? Or, you know, do I, I don't know wait for the freaking Lambo to come in and wait for the moonshot. I don't know. Let me know down below in the comments. What would you do? Also, let me know what other crypto projects are you currently looking at? What other altcoins are you looking at? Let me know. I want to try out a lot of these crypto projects that you guys are all talking about. So let me know down in the comments below. What are you guys getting into or looking about getting into? And I will potentially try it out for you. So thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe, please, because I might be out $500. But just like that, I'll catch you all on the next one. I am never going to financially recover from this.